Hello and welcome to Fugitive Poems Containment Breach 3 Minute Meets. Today uh, we're going to be talking with a contributor to the Containment Breach Volume 2 Anthology. I'm Christian DeMatteo, co-founder of Fugitive Poems, and uh, we are meeting today with Jeffrey Burant. Jeffrey, how oh, are you? Hi. I'm doing great. How are you, Christian? I'm I'm doing fantastic. I am so glad to talk to you. Uh, 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 when uh, when we first uh, received an email from Jeffrey, uh, there was all this great stuff uh, attached to it, including we we're just talking about your rock band. You're saying yeah. it's a sci-fi rock band. What was the name of the band? Americans UK. Yeah. Ah. Uh, the origin of that name was in when I was an undergrad. I was writing uh, a science fiction novel which became uh, what got me into grad school and why I moved to New York. Uh, and the band in the future that everyone was going to see was Americans UK. And I loved the name. I thought the name was so funny that um, when the opportunity arose to start my own band, I just used it. <laughs> did did you, do you, where can people go to see, uh, see the videos? Uh, Americans-UK.com will take you, there's at least two of them on there. And then we have a YouTube page which is uh, the Americans UK. And there's a third one that I never uploaded to the website on there. Uh, the Phenomenana, I don't know if you saw that one where we're in a plane fighting uh, no. robot, robot spheres. It's a sequel to Lights Out in Zap City, which we, you know, all these little robot spheres suck out all the electricity of the city. I don't know if you saw that one. Yes. Okay, so there's a direct sequel to that one called Phenomenana um that is equally as exciting as those other two can i say here and you could you could totally say no you're not going to do this that <laughs> if your hit count on youtube like like quadruples over the next five days after this video is released you'll put that third one up can we uh... i love you yes it's a pure laziness of like oh i gotta reformat it and upload it to here i mean it's up in the world i'll send it i'll, I'll just email you after with the link so you can see it that way you don't have to search for it uh, but I want every I want everyone to go to your swamp your YouTube and yeah. like the, the demand will make you put it up. Um, <laughs> so you uh, uh, so you you were in, you're in a band. You're a writer. Uh, what yeah. else? Uh, what else about you? Well, I've been writing comics since I don't know two thousand six or so. Uh, right after I graduated um, Brooklyn College, I have an MFA in fiction writing, and I switched from writing prose to writing comics like one of my first paid gigs out was I got this gig writing uh, a special um, a special advertisement for details magazine where it was for Stella no was it um, uh, oh no it's for Amstel light and so it was a three-part comic book that ran through details magazine advertising um, for Amstel light wow. and uh, it paid really well, and I've never been paid as well since. <laughs> and so I've just been chasing that, <laughs> chasing that page rate. <laughs> uh, that, that's, then, that's sort around of around that same writers. time was when uh, Americans UK was in was in full thrust, and uh, I was self publishing the sci fi adventure. So there's about 120 pages of Americans UK comics out there in the world that I would go and you know print them out myself via kablam take them to conventions and sell them and stuff is there anywhere people can see any of that or a taste for it uh you can see i i you know i've started to put them on my website jeff writes j with one f j e f w r i t s dot com and like i've got some of the short stories up there now and i'm thinking of you know we had a fifth issue that got like 90% produced that we never released uh, because the artist couldn't finish and I didn't want to finish without him. And we're, we're very good friends. So it wasn't like a, an animosity thing. And I've been thinking about maybe doing a Kickstarter at some point to like finish the last one and collect those in a trade and then maybe get some momentum to finish the whole arc. Cause it was like an eight issue arc. It was before I learned to write uh, shorter arcs. <laughs> got it, got it. <laughs> how you want to cool. get a public more regularly. How cool would a motion comic be yeah. with the videos in it? Yeah, I mean, we did, um, if you go to our YouTube, we did some stuff like that, just like pan and scan type of stuff. Okay. And then um, uh, not to, uh, and then uh, I've got a, a Kickstarter coming out in uh, August where we actually animated panels for our, 
for the video itself. Oh, um, all right. Americans UK uh, music in the background for the for the video. And where are we gonna keep an eye out? What's your Twitter uh, handle? Um, my Twitter handle is because of my rock name was Jeff UK, and so it's J E F underscore U K. Okay, Twitter. and we can keep an eye there for the Kickstarter. Yeah, and if you go to killerbad.com, it takes you to the, the Kickstarter launch page. Oh, it's Killer Bad? That's that. Okay, got yeah. it. Got it, got it, got it. Um, so tell me, tell me, what are you doing for, for us for Containment Breach? What are you working on? The uh, theme, by the way, for Containment Breach, forgive me for interrupting, it is Mythology Reborn. I don't know if we're going to stay with Reborn. I like it right now, but I've been going back and forth. But the concept is rethinking mythology, right? <laughs> and what we did was we had every team that was accepted – submit a prompt that then went to another team we shuffled them all up and so what what's happening is each creative team is creating a story based on the overall theme of mythology reborn somehow including the creative absurd creative prompt that they were given so what are you working on so um well first of all i love that idea that's why i was so excited to work on this um like we were talking before we started recording i feel like so much of anthology submissions is like whipping out an old script maybe that uh or or or, or getting the first five pages of your pitch together and, and submitting it to an anthology so i love the idea of not knowing what was going to come and having what we had like two weeks to write a script um and it was awesome i loved it it was so much fun it was exactly what i'm looking for i'm very deadline driven and and, uh, um, and so uh, we got a prompt. So I'll tell you a secret. My the what I ended up writing, which I, I think I can give the the title, the last fay. It's the last yes. fay. It's it's post apocalyptic cyber fairies, as though fairies exist. Very in, common genre. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah. the future, and so they're teched out, and um, you know they inhabit these uh, trees in an otherwise kind of post apocalyptic landscapes, and have their own. You know, we gesture towards this long running story that doesn't really exist yet <laughs> and uh uh but and and then just that i got paired with pierre rose has been a treasure so good so good um and so that's what i'm working on the last fay it's a post-apocalyptic uh cyber fairy story um i believe it clocks in at nine pages now um and i'm very excited about it and my secret is that that was going to be the last fay was going to be my prompt and then, and I'd already started like gearing up, uh, you know, you can't help but think about what it's going to be. And so when Pierre recommended another prompt, I was immediately like, yeah, let's go with that one. <laughs> and then, and then the thing that came in to me for the prompt had to do with trees. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so glad I kept this card in my back pocket because it totally worked out. Hold on, hold on. The, your theme came from a uh, 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 purple smurf at purple smurf is his okay. Twitter handle and it was inspired by the golden bow he's like i don't know if you know these books the golden bow this is what wow. inspired t.s Eliot to write the wasteland it was wow. this incredible look at at mythology and his theme was to become the guardian of the sacred tree you must yeah. kill the guardian of the sacred tree which is from here and yeah, um, forgive me if i run off camera i was just really excited you brought that up we had such cool props come in i know what you're talking about because when i come up with a prompt i immediately do it giving it away is one, is one of the reasons we did this because <laughs> there's a there's a, a sacrifice involved in this giving away a good prompt is like mm. <laughs> yeah well, I mean, we went, so Pierre had been reading, and I'm sure he'll tell you this if you interview, he'd been reading Caucus Metamorphosis and was like really into that idea. And I was like, well, maybe we'll do be give a gift to the other people. And we gave, I think, just that broad metamorphosis and let them yes. work on something that maybe was dear to them and not have to like rethink everything so <laughs> I, I i teach that every chance i can the metamorphosis is this there's so much it's so famous and it's like hamlet everyone thinks they know what there is to know about it but the, every time you read it there's more and there's more and there's more there yeah. uh so let me let me ask you ask you this you you clearly have uh, I was going to ask you about your your dream life, but I actually think we're getting a really good sense of that. You're a writer, <laughs> 100 miles an hour ahead writer, and I love that. So if you could tell us one thing about yourself that would tell us everything about you, what would that be? 
Well, just that uh, I used to dress up like a vigilante and perform in front of 50 to 100 people every weekend in New York City, <laughs> singing about things like, uh, you know, eight men in post-apocalyptic worlds and, uh, and, and sing about our sci-fi adventures. Uh, a lot of the stuff we did, a lot of the comics I would make for Americans UK would be based on our lyrics. I always tried to write lyrics that um, actually pulled a little story mm -hmm. and instead of um, being broad, vague stuff about relationships, we actually had a whole rule at some point about no songs about uh, girlfriends or boyfriends or anything, no relationship stuff. Uh, and so I think that tells you everything. Uh, you need to know. I was uh, I was a bit of a cock of the walk at the time, and I think I you know I've settled down and and I'm not so uh, full of self importance like I was back then. <laughs> <laughs> I think my uh, maybe my career would be for would be f further now if I hadn't been uh, uh, so so self assured. But that's what you get when you're the front man of a rock band for a. a what are you gonna years. do? What are you? Gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> It's better to burn out than have success in the future. Was that the expression? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of, so I parlayed that into a, 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 my first, I got a contract from Oni Press like really early um, in like 2006, 2007, signed that thing, took a long time to make the book. And it was basically like a kid's version. It's called Odd Schnauz and the Odd Squad. We also made a soundtrack buy the band wow. the book so you can go like listen to their music and stuff. I used to have a website that I, it, finally made sense not to pay for anymore but um if you google Ajnaz and the odd squad it'll come up uh, on uh, Bandcamp. and so we made a whole album with that and it was basically like a kid's version because america's uk was very like us doing drugs and cursing and stuff like that and then this is like teens teen sci-fi adventures it's much more like uh uh for like 12 to 15 year olds um got it and so we even got at the time we got um the, my co-producer of the of the music, uh, Peter Boyko, who in uh, is our uh, plays the guitar in those videos you've seen. Um, he had a niece at the time who was 16, like right at the age. So we got her who was in uh, uh, school of rock classes, you know, like. Oh, the, wow. And so she could really sing. So we got an actual 16 year old to sing. Oh, the cool. Song, and so it sounds like legit, even though it's you know 30 year old men playing the music. So you did not burn out and you did get a future career and I get to meet you. We get to have you. I guess. Bridge. It's been slow going since, man. I just never give up constantly, just like taking the next little pop. Uh, if we were smart, we would have become accountants, but we decided to follow art. <laughs> and, right. uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're hoping for posthumous, but maybe something a little before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, it has been wonderful talking to you. Uh, I, I cannot wait. I have seen every step of the way on this story so far. I'm excited about it every time, despite how overdone the the genre of what did you call it? <laughs> yeah. What would you call it? Uh, post apocalyptic uh, cyber fairies. <laughs> Cy yeah, I mean, I know we're inundated with that on television. But, uh, no, this is fantastic, Jeffrey. It's a pleasure to, to talk to you. Um, and uh, guys, keep an eye on FugitivePoems.com. Uh, subscribe to FugitivePoems.com for updates. On uh, Subscribe to our YouTube page uh, for updates on the on Containment Breach Volume 2. The Kickstarter is coming out in the fall. Uh, Jeff writes, is it, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, my Twitter handle, Twitter handle and Instagram is all J-E-F underscore U-K, Jeff U-K. And then uh, my website is JeffWrites.com. There you go. Keep an eye on Jeff. Uh, he's got some really cool stuff coming out. I'm so excited for everyone to see this book. Jeffrey, thank you so very much for meeting with thank me. Thank you so much. And uh, we are Fugitive Poems, and we make comics.